Welcome to Yucanic. Today here on Yucanic we have a 2019 Chevy Trax with the 1.4 liter Ecotec motor. And on this Chevy Trax we're going to go over how you would be able to remove your water pump for replacement. This water pump is actually seeping and we have coolant that is, is leaking out of it, out of the seal sack. And so you would replace the whole water pump. So to gain access to this water pump housing, this is the, uh, the water pump pulley, and the whole housing that holds the water pump is behind there. And so you'll need to remove the motor mount that sits in here, three bolts that attach to the engine, and then there's three bolts that attach to this fender here. And, and remove those and then be able to move and raise the engine to be able to get that motor mount out, or you could take the three bolts out of the motor mount to separate into two pieces. So we have three bolts here on the bottom of the motor mount that go into the motor, and we're gonna remove those. Those three bolts are a, a stretch bolt or a torque to, torque to spec, and you're only supposed to use them once, right? So these three bolts here, as well as the other three that bolt to it, you're supposed to replace those also. Now, we are gonna go and see if we can remove this portion of the motor mount and the bracket uh, is all one full piece to be able to remove that and save us from having to get another three bolts when we only get any. So coming out from up top, we need to remove this air box. And so um, the whole air box will lift out. We're gonna undo the clamp over here on this intake line and then just remove this whole unit. So um, disconnect the uh, mass airflow center connector and then we're going to set that aside. Now we have a connection right here. And so we'll just take a screwdriver and push the push pin back. And we can push that out to the side. Now the air box is essentially free. It's just got some, uh, you would have a, also a little down pipe here. And that down pipe is, is broken or missing already. But this down pipe would come up and mount up to the top here. So now. We can just pull this up. It's just held in by a little grommet on the bottom and the top. And now we have this up and out of the way. But we're just going to go ahead and undo this clamp over here, which is a seven millimeter, and be able to take off this whole thing. So we're really get it out of the way. We've got that undone and out of the way. I'll put a cover over this, this inlet pipe, so that we don't have anything accidentally fall down in there. So now we have access to the bolts that are on top of the motor mount. And so these are size 18 uh, to remove these three nuts here. These are size 15, but we're going to try to do it and leave these three in as one full unit and be able to take and pop this whole thing out. So I'm going to remove these three nuts here and then the three bolts on to the motor mount that go into the engine. So we got the top three undone, and now we will remove the bottom three that bolt into the motor, and then this whole unit, well hopefully we can rock it out and remove the full unit as one whole piece. Now we have our jack down here already, to support the motor and his re um, have it up, just touching the bottom of the motor. And so now be able to remove those three bolts. All right, we have those three bolts removed. Now, should be able to go up top and be able to remove the full motor mount. And like I said, we have it supported and being held with the jack. And we can see that it's not moving, so that's, that's a good sign. Okay, so we got the whole motor mount and bracket that mounts to the motor all out is one full unit. Um, did have to raise the engine up a bit to be able to get this to clear. We'll also need to take off the serpentine belt and just release the tension on the tensioner. Put the pin, there is a pin we can put through or just an Allen wrench that you can put through to hold the tension off. 
and then we'll remove the belt and then we need to remove this pulley to be able to get two bolts that are behind there and we do reuse this pulley on the new water and then we work our way over to this side our thermostat is this unit right here and so whether you're going to just replace just the thermostat because you only need to replace that or you replace it as all one unit you can bolt it all together and replace that all as one full unit also and so to be able to remove it you'll want to just be undo some uh, electric connectors just to give you the space there's going to be a handful of electric connectors to undo on this side as well as this vacuum line that will undo to be able to move out of the way just give us space there's three bolts here on this to undo but if you just take if you're doing your water pump and um, thermostat together as one full unit you won't even need to worry about moving this just undo the electric connectors undo this connector and pull off the hose uh, except that we do have one hose that's down here on the side that we'll have to squeeze the squeeze clamps to get it undone as well as one that's back over here. But before we uh, start doing this, we might as well start the, um, the water draining out uh, or the engine coolant to drain out so that when we take these components off, we don't have water going everywhere. We'll still have a little bit, but we won't have as much. So to drain the engine coolant, we have a, a drain right here on the, what would be the right-hand side of the radiator. And we just need to spin this back to loosen it and then the water will drain out and we have uh, something to catch the water the coolant in. Um, you can get a big screwdriver to put in here or find the wrench to loosen this little plastic. You also, for this, you'll remove, there is a, a splash shield that's here too that you remove out of the way so that you have easy access to just drain all your coolant. So we have that loosen and now we just kind of let that drain. So we'll let that drain as we are working on getting this stuff cleared out of the way to remove the water pump. And then you can take this cap off to provide the air, air to go into the system and it'll let the, the water drain. So the water system is gonna be draining and now we'll go ahead and unhook these electric connectors to get them out of our way. Okay, we got that vacuum line just out of the way. That way it just gives us some extra space. And there we go. So now this clamp, you just pull it back a little bit. You don't need to pull it all the way back. You pull it back and it has a little channel there. And then we'll be able to pop off this hose here. And when we get ready, we should be able to pop that hose off. And then we'll need to get down inside here and be able to get a squeeze clamp to undo that one. And so also, we'll uh, take the serpentine belt off and, and be able to pin that up so that we can remove this pulley. Okay, so we've removed our serpentine belt just by putting our 15 millimeter on this uh, tensioner going clockwise and that removes the tension off the serpentine belt. Now we'll take these three bolts out to be able to remove that pulley. So those were uh, E14 to undo the pulley. And now we can pop the pulley off. Now if you weren't able to, uh, see we've got the seeping antifreeze on the inside here that's coming out of this 
pull it in. But uh, if you weren't able to have an impact or anything to get in there, you can put a, a wrench on this to hold the pulley from spinning. And in that way, you can undo this. So we need to, we have a hose over here to undo. So we have this hose over here to undo. Just need to squeeze that clamp. So squeeze the clamp, backed it off. Now we need to be able to get that to pull back. Use a pick tool to break the uh, surface tension. And then we have this one on the front, which we had pulled the clamp back. And so now this should just pop off. And then last, we have one more hose down there that we got to, to uh, squeeze the clamp together and move it down. And then that'll be all the hoses undone. Then we have to go around and undo all the, uh, the bolts that hold that on. So that should be loosened up, go around and remove all the bolts to hold this water pump on and then remove that and we'll be able to get enough space in there to pop that other hose off that's on the bottom there. Okay, so we've got all the hoses undone except for the one over here. It's not completely undone, but we will get that undone, which is connected to the uh, thermostat unit itself. But we can undo all the bolts here that hold on the water pump and then remove that water pump to be able to get ready to install a new one. So we just gotta work our way around and find all these E E10s and just remove them. Okay, so we have all the bolts to hold the water pump have been undone. And now we just need to pop that water pump. And so we have a little tab here that we can get our pry bar or a large screwdriver in there. Okay, so we've removed our water pump, thermostat all together as one unit to be able to replace this. We also will need to remove this gasket. And then we will clean up the area to be able to put a new gasket. When we get the new gasket, put it on so that it can seal properly. So that's the removal of your water pump. This is the, the old water pump. And we have water that was leaking from this pulley system. And so uh, it's time to replace the water pump. And so now we are going to replace it with the new one to not have leaks. And we have three different sizes of bolts that go on here. We have on the very, this side here, there's two long ones. Uh, they're the longest, two of the longest. Then we have three that are um, just a bit shorter than that. One on the bottom here, one on the bottom here and one at the very top, right there. And then the rest of them are five other bolts that are all the same size to fill in all. So there's 10 total bolts that hold this water pump on, and we have our thermostat attached. Um, this is the old one, but we will put a brand new thermostat on the new one once we have this attached to the vehicle. You can attach it before you put it on the vehicle and eliminate that process but we'll just do the water pump first and then 
to do the um, thermostat. I have two bolts that are holding through to hold the gasket into place. And then we're going to get this lined up and on there. Be able to get those bolts to start in and then do, do a check to make sure that the gasket hasn't folded up on itself anywhere. Good. So these are all in E10. So these are the five shortest bolts. One goes up top here. And we have the first two. And we have one short there. We have a short right here in the middle. And then a short one down here on the bottom. And then we have the three that are longer. There's two longer than this, but there's these three. One goes down here at the inlet to the thermostat. And then one up the top here. And then the last one of this medium range goes in the bottom here. And the uh, two longest ones with the flat bottoms, we got one that goes in um, right here on the back side. And then one that goes just straight below it. So those are all hand snug up. And now we will uh, torque them to spec, which is eight foot pound. And you'll work on a, an alternating pattern. Okay, we tightened all those 10 bolts torque to spec and went around again, make sure that they're all torque to spec on there. Um, while we're at it, we'll connect this hose up on this side. And that way when we put the belt on, or not the belt, when we put the, uh, the pulley on, it's not in the wet. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and put the thermostat on and connect this all up and tighten the bolts to here. Like I said, you can put the thermostat on while it's outside the vehicle. Probably an easier method to do that, but I opted to do it as ultimate to add it here. So that is the install of the water pump. We will have to put on the water pump pulley and then you tighten those bolts to 16 foot pounds, the three bolts that hold the pulley on and then we'll finish that up or uh, install the thermostat so the thermostat attaches to the water pump housing and so we just need to move these wires a little bit to the side and be able to install the thermostat on there and tighten up the bolts that hold it one thing with your gasket that goes on your thermostat it's going to have one direction that it can go 
So if this tab up top isn't lined up, and say you have it flipped over in reverse, it, it can't go there because you need to have the tab, this little rubber tab will line up. And so you shouldn't be able to get it in reverse. Now we're gonna take our thermostat. This is the electric connector and it goes up on the top. And then we have the port here that's gonna go down and hook up to a hose down there. So that's the orientation. So you got just one bolt started in there. I'm gonna reach down through here and be able to get that hose connection. Okay, good. So the hose is connected. Now just need to reach in with the pliers and bring the um the clamp up. The clamp is in location. Um, so we've got that clamp that's right down there connected onto that hose there. So we just need to go around and tighten those three bolts. So that is all tightened into place. Um, next time, if you are replacing the water pump, put the uh, thermostat on before you put it on there. If you're just replacing the thermostat, it is going to take a bit of time. But if you're doing the water pump, you do it all together, you'll be just fine. So this larger hose, the clamp is pressed in, and so all you got to do is just push it, and then it'll snap, and that locks into place. So we have that bigger hose connected. Now take off that connector. Uh, it was a protector for the electric connection. Now we can make the electric connection up. Put the safety lock in by pressing that red tab in. Then you can go ahead and connect these other electric connectors, which one is to the, um, these are the cam, variable cam adjusters, and then this is the cam position sensor. So we've made those connections there. Then we're gonna wanna put this vacuum line connection back on. And you just press press until it clicks into place, and then you clamp this other little vacuum line in. And we have the standard Philip hose right here. We will bring that back over and get it pressed into the um, clamping locations to hold that into place. So that is all for the water pump, the thermostat, housing, everything that you need to do there. Um, the last thing, of course, with the uh, water pump that you... So the last thing with the water pump is that we need to mount the pulley to it. Make sure that our pulley looks like it's in good condition, which it is. And then just be able to line this up on there. Take the three bolts that are mounted in there. Tighten those to 16 foot pound. You'll need to use a big wrench on here to hold this back while you tighten these down. And that is the install of your water pump. 
as well as finishing up. Um, so we finished up the water pump and we did the um, the thermostat. And like I said, if you're replacing your water pump and replacing your thermostat, or vice versa, I would do it as all one unit. If you are just doing the thermostat, it is going to take a little bit just because of the tightness of the space. But tighten these to 16 foot pounds and you're, you're good to go. Then you can put your serpentine belt back on and then put your motor mount. So the belt, we have the rib side go around a water pump, around the AC pump, around the crankshaft, smooth side around this tensioner, rib side around the alternator, and we come back up here. And so it's a fairly straightforward routing. So we'll get it wrapped around here, release the tension on our tensioner. This is a 15 millimeter bolt now. It was an E14, um, I think, but the new tensioner came with just a 15 millimeter bolt on it. So we'll be able to put a 15 millimeter on here and be able to turn clockwise, and that will back the tension off so that we can get the belt wrapped around here. And so that's the orientation that we need to wrap our belt around to get it installed on our vehicle. We have that belt around all the pulleys set inside the ribs all inside where they should be. Install the motor mount and and the bracket that holds it. Since we needed to remove it to be able to do the serpentine belt and the tensioner, um, water pump, alternator and all that, you need to remove this. So now we kept it, I kept it as all one uh, piece. You can undo these three bolts here and then it'll be two separate pieces, but you can keep it as all one piece. So we kept it as all one piece and now we'll be able to guide this down here. The bottom bolt, you don't have to have it in completely right now because once you get it in there, you can put the bottom one in, but the two side bolts you'll want to have in as you place it down in there because you won't have enough space to push them in if not. So the motor is on a jack, and so we need to raise the motor up to be able to get the clearance. To get this motor mount to clear the side of the fender. So we got that over it a little bit. Just need to pull the bolt back. So we have it down in there. The motor mount is going to be on the inside of all of the belt. So the front and the back side will go on the inside of the belt. So I snug that one up over there. We will torque them to spec. They're torqued to 46 foot pounds. All three of these that go into the motor. So we got those two. The third one, once we drop the uh, motor down onto this component here, onto the, the fender or the frame, then we will be able to insert the, uh, the bottom one. So we need to bring our motor up a little bit, pull it to the front because it's shifted a little bit to the back. And you'll uh, keep your hands clear of the pinch points as you're lowering down. And so now it is sitting on the frame. 
We have three nuts that are going to go up on the top here. And they get tightened down to 50 foot pounds. So we have 36 foot pounds into the engine and 46 foot pounds in the engine and 50 foot pounds here to the frame to tighten these the bolts. So 15 on the bolts, uh, they're size 15 millimeter bolt head to be able to put them into the side of the motor. And then I believe this is 18. And everything seems to be actually right aligned with where it was mounted originally. So that's a good sign. Uh, like I said. So that's the install of your motor mount. So once you've uh, tightened, torqued the bolts on the engine side, 46 foot pound, torque these to 50 foot pound, then the le last thing you'll need to do when you're finally done with all this is just be able to set in the air box with the tube that comes to the intake and just tighten the two clamps on this side.